Now, PTX Print was born out of a desire to get draft printing working from Paratext. We took the existing ZTech macros and created a GUI and then fixed and enhanced the macros. So it's mature all the way down from top to bottom in terms of technology that stack that we're using. Now we have something that we hope will be useful for all. The aim for PTX Print is that simple things are kept simple and complex things are as simple as we can make them. Now we want to enable teams to be able to produce portions and trial prints, that's you know less than 50 copies or whatever, easily and in a timely fashion. The results then promote community engagement and allow the community to say how they want the future publications to look. If a team has to wait months for a portion to be typeset, then the momentum is easily lost. And local printing facilitates church-based Bible translation and equips local translation projects to be more successful. This, along with the ongoing exponential growth in Bible translation, means that there's an exponential growth in typesetting needs. And these are not going to be met just by adding more typesetters, which merely gives linear growth. Exponential growth requires new modes of thinking and tooling. Another important area of need is that of dyed lots. With the growth of diaspora communities and multilingualism, there's a growing demand for multilingual dyed lots. Currently, these take a long time to produce. Can we make these easier to produce? Well, I think we can. Now notice PTX Print isn't trying to compete with um, Paratext Assistant, PA. They're different tools. If you want complete control over layout and to be able to step outside the ordinary, then you need InDesign and PA. But if you don't have access to those, then PTX may meet your needs. So if a measure of a product's maturity is measured by having an advisory steering committee, we're making good progress. And this project has been going for two and a half years. And so we've come quite a long way in that time. So what is it the communities need to be thinking about? Well, what do you have to think about when you actually want to typeset some scripture? Do you want single column with a header ruler or without? Or double column with balanced columns, of course, across the bottom? with a center rule or without? What about content? Do you want introductions without lines or without lines or no, or no introduction material at all? This is particularly useful for short portions. Scripture is typically justified, but perhaps you want ragged text for ease of reading. Do you want verse numbers in the margin or do you need them colored? or even decorated, we'll see more of that later. Some people definitely need this. And for poetry, should verse numbers hang to the left? Look very carefully at the 2-3 two, two that's under the chapter two, which you probably can't see, but it's just, you can see it there. Should chapter numbers disappear, um, should they hang out to the left? Which is a common thing and makes them not line, line up nicely. Or should chapter numbers disappear for poetry books and have chapter labels instead? These are all decisions you have to make. Do you want footnotes kept separate from cross-references or have them intermixed or one footnote per line or at the end of the column? Or do we really need that separating line anyway? Cross-references. There are collections of cross-references we can add to any language. Do you want them at the beginning of the page or in a center column? Or perhaps hanging off the side of single column text? Pictures are fun, but are they appropriate for the audience? We pick up these standard pictures. Have they been tested? Have the community, community looked at them and gone, hmm, yeah, no, that means that, that, that bird isn't flying out of Jesus's head. Um, do, is it actually communicating what we think it communicates to that audience? And for single column text, you need to make a cutout, which is not easy. And then copyright owners have demands about receiving their credit, and we need to put localized copyrights on the image. Which brings us to a, a fun uh, facilitate, facilitation here. While many image copyright holders are very generous with their allowing us and others to use their images, they do have some requirements, and this usually revolves around attribution. It would be so nice if the typesetting tool 
would work out what pages images are on and create the appropriate co copyright text for us. This way, people are much more likely to comply with the picture's conditions of use for even simple publications. And yes, that's what we do. Modern printing allows for printing right to the edge of the page. It's called bleed. And we can use that to good effect in providing a poor man's thumb tab. Hey, it's just ink. Maybe you want them horizontal as well. Or color printing. It's possible too, if you're willing to pay for it or you're using it for digital use. Here we have Jesus words in red. Right to left text has its own interesting problems. Such text is often bordered. And then verse numbers may be decorated with what's called an end of ayah mark. End of ayah meaning end of verse. So why not move it from the beginning of the verse to the end of the verse, then it's a real end of ayah. Some need that. Then there's vertical layout. Here we have top to bottom, left to right, with some of the elements rotated like the chapter number. Hyphenation is an important capability to help make lines balance well when there are long words on a line. And here you can see the first example, a big gap on that first line. This is just really, you know, you've got these big gaps. What can we do about them? Well, using hyphenation, we can then make the gaps seem much more sensible and it gives a more smoother read. And sometimes one needs words to break without using a hyphenation. In this case, syllable breaking is used in the Burmese script. And these can be inserted algorithmically. And we provide these for different scripts. So again, a mess on the left and much improved on the right. All good things. So here we have, well, you've seen this. This is our font view and how you select a font. And this is what Victor showed us before. And it's capable of handling all sorts of wonderful stuff. So fonts are complicated. They've got more complicated. And especially for typesetting, you may even need that horrible fake bold italic thing. Yes, we allow it, even though we hate it. But that's what some people need if they've, all they've got is one weight of font. The table of contents is really important. With or, without, with or without leaders. But what about dyed lots? Come on. Um, or sorting the books alphabetically. You can help with that. Talking of dyed lots, there are lots of different kinds of dyed lots. Here's an example of the same text in different scripts. And then there's the more traditional dyed lot with several languages. Here we've got English and Greek put together. And you'll notice that in this case, the paragraphing doesn't line up and it makes things a bit more tricky when you're doing your dyed lot. Typesetting into linear is a trick we managed to pull off. Uh, we sort of fake it a bit, but here we use it for back translation. But in some parts of the world, seeing the original text is really important. Interlinear is not always an optional extra. So dyed lot with interlinear, anyone? And then some people want to get really creative and do a songbook at the back of their Bible because they've got a few spare pages left. Another exciting opportunity arises now that we can type something that looks like a study Bible. What extra biblical text can we add to make a Bible easier to read? Here's an example where I madly went in and I, in, in uh, James, went through and put questions against passages rather than explanatory notes. And there's even a song there to help people engage more with scripture. Now it's complex and it's, it's an issue, but there's lots of scripture engagement questions that can be asked about, well, what can we now typeset that will allow people to engage with scripture more easily? So what does PDX print do to help? It's got a GUI, it's quick. We can typeset New Testaments pretty quickly, like in 30 seconds quick enough to be almost interactive because often you're only working with one book at a time and that be, might be five seconds. And with over 300 widgets and controls and stuff for people to work with, it really is helpful if we can do some hiding. So here we have the mini view, the very simple view, and then there's a basic view, and then there's the everything in its dog view, uh, which you can control everything. Another feature that we have in, in PTX print is the style editor. 
which allows you to go into any marker and change how it's typeset so you can get it styled how you want. Um, there's um, also a typesetting grid. Generally, text needs to be typeset to stay on the grid so that when you print on two sides of a piece of paper, it doesn't bleed through. And so we work very hard to keep things on the grid. Obviously, headings don't necessarily stay on the grid, but then we get back on the grid. And you can see here with the horizontal lines that we basically show the line spacing. So you can see where it's on grid and off grid. And you can also, from that, work out how many more lines could I fit on this page? Or if you want a graph paper style, you can have graph paper style. So these are all aids. We also allow for different outputs. So that we've got screen output, we've got digital, we've got print output ready to send to an offset printer uh, in CMYK and all this sort of kind of stuff. And we have the ability to create an archive. Uh, this is important. Uh, it's an important way to um, be able to share data with people, but also as an archive. And the archive has three capabilities in it. You can rerun it within PTX print. You can just pick up the tech files and just run those, or you can just look at the PDF as a result. So archiving, you often have to archive at, at multiple levels in the process of outputting the typesetting. That's what we aim to do, sans bugs. Uh, there's a certain amount of control. So you can, so, so if people really want to get into the typesetting, you can say, to tech, please make this paragraph one line longer, and it'll it'll tr it'll do that, or at least try. Um, or you can change uh, styling uh, by using a change table in effect as it goes through. Uh, it doesn't change the original. We never change the original text. We just dynamically cr create the stuff on the fly, and then typeset that. People have said, "Why don't you have a manual? You you've got a program. You should have a manual." Well, we decided that actually it'd be more helpful to have contextual help. And so everything, pretty much everything, um, has a tooltip. So it's all done on tooltips. And uh, this stuff is localized. Here's, you know, this is just typical um, localizing. Again, we use Crowdin. So we're part of the Crowdin Club. Thank you, folk, for uh, welcoming us into your Crowdin society. We love it. It's going really well. Uh, the uh, colophon information about pictures can also be translated into these languages. And we're very happy if people want to contribute more translations for this stuff, more languages, we're wide open for that. So what this is opening up is the whole realm of micro publishing. We can print portions early for community engagement. We can print final checking copy so the community review, they can look at it and go, yeah, this is what we really want. This is especially useful for study Bibles. Another kind of guide lock contains the local language and then the national or regional language that people in church are used to. And this helps a pastor, for example, to build confidence in the translation. Hey, I can see that this translation is better than what I could do on the fly in church. And then there are specialist products. For many decades, the communities that we serve have only ever seen one variety of scripture products served them in print. Well, there are dozens of different formats and versions available in English, and even broader range of options when we look at web or mobile applications for scripture. So in conclusion, just some notes there. Um, go to that website, you will find whole lots of videos that go through this more slowly rather than just rushing through it. Uh, there's training there on how to do, get to get good page breaking and all that kind of stuff. 